I'm a drought physiologist here at Erie. And uh, this, these two rainout shelters are part of the experiments we're doing to characterize the physiological response of um, lines with major drought QTLs. So um, as you can see, there are, are two shelters, and we've had them for about a year and a half. And they're really useful because here in Los Banos, sometimes it's difficult to get a good drought treatment since it rains pretty often. But what we do is, if it's going to rain, we just cover all of the plants by rolling the rain shelter over them. And that's why you can see the soil is really dry here compared to other sites at Erie because it hasn't received any rainfall for um, over one month. So uh, just to tell you a little bit about the experiments, we have four different experiments here. And all four of them are lines from Dr. Kumar's breeding program. So um, the one we're standing in right now is uh, IR64 ADE cell lines. So we have three lines that are plus QTL and three lines that are minus QTL. And our job is to figure out what is the physiological mechanism that makes the plus QTL lines do so well under drought compared to the minus QTL lines? And actually, this experiment we've made a lot of progress on in the past six months. We know that um, there are some root traits that are contributing to improved water uptake of the plus QTL lines. The experiment behind us is Aposwarna lines. And that one, we haven't made as much progress on in terms of characterization. We're still trying to figure that one out. And the other two experiments behind you in the other shelter are both uh, N22 lines. So in front is N22 Swarna, and in back is N22 IR64. And uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the measurements we're making. So you can see this is not a big experimental area. Our experiments are pretty small compared to what you'll see in the breeders' fields. But the reason is because we do a lot of very intense measurements. So um, first, the first thing I'll tell you about is, so this is Trom, he's our assistant scientist, and he uh, is managing a lot of the measurements we do here. This rack allows us to make measurements in every plot without walking inside the plots. So that's useful when we start drying down the experiments so we don't make footprints. And the sensor that's going across the plot here is a NDVI sensor, so that measures reflectance. And we can do that measurement as often as we want. It's non-destructive. So we could measure the plants every day, multiple times a day, to look for differences among genotypes. And the other instrument up high is an infrared camera. So when the, when the pole is on the other side of the plot, it takes images of the rainout shelter behind us. And we use the infrared camera to look at canopy temperature. And that indicates drought response because plants that can maintain a cool temperature when the soil is dry tend to have a better yield and have better water uptake. So um, those are a couple of the measurements we make. Another thing I'd like to point out is uh, we have a lot of soil sensors in these plots. Actually, we have four different types. You can see this one is a tensiometer. It tells you about um, soil water potential. These kind of instruments are measuring volumetric soil moisture. And these are nice because um, they make measurements every minute. They're wireless. We have a repeater on that pole that sends a signal back to our office in, in the middle of Erie. So we're looking at how the soil moisture is changing with different times of day. And we have water table tubes and um, another type of volumetric soil moisture sensor. So. Yeah, I guess for us, because there's so many different types of drought, that's the one thing we really focus on is characterizing what type of drought is occurring so we can understand the response of these genotypes better. So uh, that's just a brief introduction, and if anyone has any questions, I'd ha be happy to take them. In what crop growth stage you have created the drought here? Um, we're t no, we were targeting reproductive stage. So we let them grow for about one month after transplanting. And actually, um, we were targeting more that experiment because it has a longer time to flowering. It has Swarna as one of the parent lines. So um, 
I think we let them even go maybe five weeks after transplanting before we drained this plot. That one we drained about 10 days earlier. And we've already rewatered it once. From the transpiration? Um, actually, I don't understand your first question completely. Maybe you can so explain that. Water is not That's right. <laughs> No, that's not something I've been looking at, but I agree that the relative humidity is something that probably is a factor in terms of drought response and the plant's ability to cool itself. And we're here doing experiments in the Philippines where it's very humid and in some cases our target environment is very dry. So that's why um, we're trying to also increase the amount of activities we're doing in target environments with drier air conditions because, yeah, it could make a big difference.